it's switch time. So, what I have here today is a perfectly working switch light, despite all appearances. Uh, so this was actually sent to me by um, someone who watches my channel. Huge shout out. Thank you for that. Um, I regret not doing a video on repairing it, but I kind of stumbled upon, across the actual issue and then the repair itself, uh, which I will go over in the video, but sorry, it just it wasn't there. Um, what had happened, the previous owner had this. The screen wasn't working. They tried replacing the screen. It still wasn't working. Uh, when I got it, I found out that the screen, the brand new screen that was installed in this thing was working, except that there was no backlight. Uh, I went ahead and ran uh, wires, uh, jumpers for the backlight, and ta-da, it seems to be working. Uh, unfortunately, the touch screen itself, the digitizer is a little bit messed up. It looks like at some point in the life of this thing, when someone tried removing this digitizer, they pried under it with something that scratched up all the inside. And so realistically, all this thing needs is a new digitizer and new adhesive. I have neither, but I have something else. Um, so yeah, backlight's working perfectly fine. I even got full backlight control. It's hooked up the way it should be. Uh, the digitizer did work until I unplugged it, but uh, everything else on the console should be fully working. I'm gonna go ahead and power it off so we can take a look at what I've got here. I've got a replacement screen assembly. Yes, hello. That uses a digitizer laminated to the LCD. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I did a video a little while back on the original Switch where I did this um, and it came out really, really, really well. So I was super stoked to see these pop up for Switch Lite. Uh, but of course, while we're here, since getting to that screen is such a pain in the butt, I figure we might as well do something about this worn out shell. Um, for the most part, it's okay. It's perfectly fine. Uh, it, but it is very, very used and that is very apparent if you look at it closely. Obviously, structurally, it's totally fine, but why not swap it out while we're going to be in there? I have not looked up any instructions on how to do this. We're going to fly blind until I run into something that I really need to look up. But I've got new shell, new buttons, new screen assembly. It's going to be good. It always freaked me out on these things, how essentially the faceplate pops off, but then you remove the back cover, because everything's still attached to the faceplate. You gotta kind of stretch that around the faceplate and then it just comes right off. Usually, there are some plastic clips. And it helps if you pull the game out. There we go. Easy. Just pay no attention to the fact that I almost ripped the power switch off. Because I took this apart the wrong way. Forgive me, it's been a while. But, ta-da. And then the backlight I think I repaired over here. You can see there is a missing capacitor, and then I ran a jumper wire. Very small repair, but that seemed to, seemed to do it, so go for it. Where's the battery? Battery is right here, so it probably plugs in right here-ish, which means I gotta get all this off. Mm -hmm. 
that it? Just the three? I never put a uh, paste on this. I knew I was going to have it apart, I guess. All right. The battery's out. We can safely continue disassembling this. Until there's nothing left. Okay. The hell is that supposed to? Oh, that's supposed to be the digitizer that's already disconnected. Ooh, that spooked me. I'm looking at a big, empty, unpopulated connector. Was that in the wrong spot? There are about a million things to take apart on these things. We're going to be here a while. One. Two. Ooh, that's a little gross, isn't it? I am going to pop the joystick out right now just so that this thing sits flat on the table. I could have done that with the other one too. Oh well. I don't know if that actually has to come out. Probably does because there's probably screws under it. There's 
means the heat sink probably has to come out too. I bet I left that bare too. Yep. There is some water damage. Should spend some time cleaning that up. Maybe. Right, let's pop the fan out. screws left three one two three and then is my motherboard free just be. That is a problem I need to deal with before it becomes a much worse problem. I don't see any other water damage on this board, uh, except for all of that. Alright, plan B. Let's pull this cover off and hope there's nothing horrible hiding underneath. Oh, that's just the EMMC. That's fine. And I know this is the SOC. So we can get a peek. Oh, and that needs to be repasted anyhow. And by repasted, I just mean paste it. I never did that either. Alright, well first things first, I'm gonna clean up the uh, water damage that I do see and then we'll circle back to this thing. VRB. Alright, I think I've got it cleaned up. Um, of course got flux everywhere and then had to give the whole thing a bath. So, I have to wait for it to dry out. But process is the same as usual, just put flux wherever I see corrosion and reflow and reflow and then just clean up all the schmoo. And usually that's good enough as long as the water damage hasn't really worked its way in. Like this. I'd have to clean up with an abrasive, which eh, might as well do right now, I guess. I have a very mildly abrasive uh, fiberglass scratch pen. 
And the entire purpose behind this pen is to just scratch loose stuff off the PCB, not to actually scratch through the silk screen or the uh, solder mask. But that's it. That's all I wanted. That's all it does. I have no idea where to get another one. I stumbled across this one by accident. But anyway, there we go. Totally forgot I was doing something here. forgot about that button. Alright. Oh man, that screw post. Even not just the screw. The screw post is totally split. It's unfortunate. Oh shoot, that can stay. Doesn't even have to come undone. There's nothing on that side. That looks to be attached to the frame. There's one screw. Two screw. And three screw. thing there. We don't need it. I'm going to peel this digitizer off just so I have something to keep together with the screen so I don't ruin it because it's still perfectly good, just not going to use it for this. From here, we're basically in the home stretch. We need one. Two of these. Which clearly I should clean before reinstalling. Oh, the other one wasn't so bad. Cool. The donor. I set aside an extra digitizer, but I won't be needing it. Okay. 
I got some extra parts that I will have to get to eventually, but not yet. used any adhesive yet, but I think I want to do some uh, tests, make sure everything actually works first. Feed that through. See that in. And I think we're good to go to start reassembly. I'm also pretty sure that's a big glob of flux that I don't want on my screen. Good lord, no wonder everything's so sticky. Now installs opposite of removal. Good lord. It's frustrating because I have to basically almost entirely reassemble this thing just to test it. I'm thinking maybe I should just assume it's going to work. That way I don't have to circle back too far to get the adhesive in. Because I'm going to want something holding this screen assembly to the frame. Ugh. Yeah, might as well do it beforehand. I'm going to get this thing torn down. Okay, I'm going to split the difference. I put some tape all up on the, the border. And I will install the screen without removing the sticky bit on the tape. I think that will be a reasonable enough compromise. That way I can come back in later and uh, fit the screen or swap it out. Still gonna be tight, but it'll work. I'm off to a wonderful start, aren't I? calls it a start even though he's been at this for almost half an hour. Almost two hours if you count the time I was cleaning the uh, motherboard.
Gee, I sure hope I can remember where everything went. Button time, do we go with the black buttons? Buttons that came with, the white buttons, or these pink ones? I'm gonna try out the pink ones. Yeah, I think that can work. Is there no plus button? Oh, really? It's like half the point in getting these. It's got power and volume. The black ones come with a plus button? No. Well, that's unfortunate. Especially since I didn't clean these. all the gunk out. something missing here. No, we're going to use the original home button. I always forget this thing um, technically supports light up. Like there's an LED in the switch and everything, but I don't know what circumstances cause it to actually illuminate. Like I know you can plug in like a switch controller to the computer and it'll work that way, but uh, that's about it. Maybe in custom firmware on the light. Don't look into that someday. That's disgusting. Drop 
that in. And we're good to go. At this point, I ought to install these things. Despite the appearance, it does still look. I'm going to put it on the other side, though. Or it does still work. Of course it still looks. Looks like what? There's a magnet right there, yep. do with that board. Here that mostly cleaned up. It's probably good. But the rest of that mostly cleaned up. It's also probably good. gone entirely too smooth. I've forgotten something. But what? right the first time. I'm fairly certain this is supposed to just like attach to the board and get installed with it but that was entirely too much effort. Not when we can just do that.
another brand new screen. And hopefully the last one. making sure I'm not sending that through a ribbon cable. This little board needs a little bit of cleanup too. It comes to water damage. That inserted. But I think that's enough to test it. And I'll keep going do some of the buttons though. Seems like a weird place to put a spring, but all right. I guess I don't understand where that thing actually actuates. What screws went here? I've already forgotten. Probably these ones. That ain't right at all. I'm gonna have to fix that. Not right this second though. Get the other one. 
one in. I think this one's going to have the same problem. Slot. It's almost there. Oh, nuts. Alright, now I need to find those. I don't have replacement screws. That's two. Alright, I'll be right back. It'll turn up, I hope, I guess. I don't know. I only found two of the three. A few more screws. that doesn't even come off. Okay. Alright, whatever. Good enough. Let's just throw this thing together so I can test it. One, two, three, one, two, three. I have two long screws, and there are two empty holes here. Ooh, but I think I missed a screw somewhere. Yep, I did. There needs to be a screw there and there. I bet it's those two long ones, but I'll circle back. Might as well throw the fan in. If we put the fan in, and the fan spins up, you know it's time to shut it down. Because <laughs> there's no heat sink.
Alright. Screw it. Here goes nothing. Pop that in. Pop that in. And the power switch. Totally forgotten about the power switch. Doesn't work without the power switch. Well, actually, it probably does, but you can't turn it on without the power switch. There we go. See what happens. Hey! Hey! Nintendo. Well, that's a good sign. So is that. I think we're good. Uh, all of the controller buttons suck. <laughs> and it keeps exiting because something is stuck down. But everything works. And that's kicking on, which means it's time to shut it down. Because there's no heat sink. I don't want to burn this thing out. Power turn off. Oh, that's nothing. It's not even warm to the touch. All right. Battery disconnected. I'm very pleased with how this has come out. <gasps> Something fell. Was that my missing screw? Or did I just happen to touch my tweezers? I think I just touched my tweezers. Oh, but I did just find it. That's convenient. Needs to come up there. Do we use the long screws here? I bet we do. I can't think of where else we would use them. Even though I'm gonna have to pull this apart and fix the buttons. Actually, that feels totally fine. That, on the other hand, feels stuck or upside down or something. Which is unfortunate because that side's a lot more difficult to get at. <sighs> Let me pause. I'm going to go fix the buttons and I'll be right back. Alright, so I got this half swapped out and everything mostly reinstalled. And then I started working on the other half and decided, you know what? Now is probably one of the better times to uh, do the screen since I know that it works. Shouldn't be anything holding it in, aside from, um, well, friction. Doesn't quite want to slip out this side though, I think. It's largely intentional. This is again one of those order of operations things that I am doing in the wrong order, but it's okay. I should be able to tilt that up just a little bit. Don't need to go far, just enough back to get those strips. I'm going to grab this 
bottom one. Or the side one. Now I'm going to grab this other side one. And then it should be home free to grab this one. one on this side, which quite frankly I probably should have grabbed first, or at least before the one I just did. Walk that up. Before totally seating that, I need to feed that back through. why you do this in the other order. Come on, I know you'll see better than that. I'm trying to pull the Jesus thing around the tape without ripping it. But I think it's too late for that ribbon. I think I might just need to let it loop around. Ripping it at this stage would suck. Alright, screw it. I'm gonna let it get kinked. Should be fine though. And hopefully I broke nothing in the process of doing that. Because it's in to stay now. but I can also speed run reassembly. screws in the long holes. Whoop. I forgot to do this one. If I have no backlight, it's because I ripped this cable. It's probably fine, but... Speaking of fine... 
all the buttons and such are fine. I'm sticking with stock buttons, and I'm even sticking with the uh, teal button holder. Uh, I, I don't know, I think it adds a little splash of color, and I like it. Would have liked the pink buttons, but they just kind of suck, so... Cool, that feels a lot better. What do we need now, this part? I suppose let's get some uh, thermal paste on this bad boy. I don't have any handy, so let me go pause and grab some. Alright. Let's get entirely too much thermal paste on here. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. It was kind of like plugged, and then it violently, quickly unplugged. But, good enough. there. Still entirely too much thermal paste as you can see by it squeezing out the sides, but whatever, the extra squeeze out the sides. Question is, what do we do for the back? Do I put the stock back on? Because I'm fine with the stock back. But with a transparent shell, you get you know a whole canvas to work with. There. I still gotta put the shielding on anyhow. I think there's supposed to be more thermal paste on that. I've totally forgotten. It's like that on the other switches though, so I don't see why this would be any different.
Ups. Was that supposed to go in there? I hope that was supposed to go in there. Pretty sure that was supposed to go in there. Nope, that wasn't supposed to go in there. Oh, it's totally fine. I think. What goes there then? Is that where the... Nope. The hell did I do wrong? Or am I just missing a screw? I bet I'm just missing a screw. I know I was missing a screw on the outside. And I guess I'll just leave it. Whatever. I'll be able to see that I'm missing a screw, but it's a price that I'll just have to pay. Totally forgotten the orientation that this goes in. There we go. Get better attention on this time. Just lift that whole thing up. Got my grills. So I just need my buttons. Actually, I'm going to leave the teal power button. I think that looks pretty neat. I'm into it. Ooh, I have forgotten a couple small things. Bear with me just a moment. All right, it's a surprise. Let's go and get this seated. Slip over the 
front, just like that. And then the bottom slips on just like that. And then I've got just a few more screws. Uh, like I said, it was missing a screw going in. Um, I guess it was closer to two screws. But it's still going to be missing a screw coming out. At least one. Well, two now. I've been sitting on this case ever since they dropped for Switch Lite hardware. Um, I never actually planned on putting a Switch Lite in this case, but there we go, I guess. in there. Ah, uh, shoot. I have made a critical error with my surprise. But it's okay. I have I have a workaround. Good lord. Oh, it's gone. That was the last one. Eh? Eh? I think it looks pretty darn good. Let us make sure the touch screen's still good. Yeah, good enough. Controller buttons, these all feel heaps better than they did with the, whoops, the other ones, except for the plus button, which still doesn't quite seem to be working properly. I think I'm going to have to tear it apart and fix that. Either the membrane's not seated properly, or there's just a screw too tight or something, but... I don't know, I'm pretty pleased with how it came out otherwise. Capture button still works, home button still works. Game cart slot still works. Not that I expected anything to the contrary. And that screw is totally gone. I have clearly never played this game on this Switch before. I'm really pleased with how that came out though. That was very clean. Stereo, I do. Hey, all right. I think that's pretty much all I've got. Um, that took a lot longer than I expected, but I really don't want to get into this game again. Um, but it wasn't too bad. 
I am pretty disappointed about my buttons, but it is what it is. Uh, the laminated screens, though. I am super pleased with that. Like, that looks, that looks great. If I kill the lights, oh, that one was already off. I suppose that's kind of a bad comparison, don't you think? Let me grab one that isn't laminated. The one I actually play on, which could use some charge. Okay, turn that up. Themes. And uh, they are both set to max brightness. So, you tell me which one you like better. The teal bezel is laminated. The gray bezel, the gray one, is perfectly stock. I mean, they are pretty close. One of the things that's uh, super difficult to see, except in person, is if you hold this one at an angle and look at look at the screen, you can see how the display gets really blurry at certain angles because the image is actually bouncing off the digitizer and then hitting the screen again. Whereas this one doesn't have that anywhere. It is nice and perfectly sharp the whole way through. Because there is no gap for the light to trans or for the light to bounce, um, the transition between materials is much smoother for the light. Therefore, there is less scattering of the light. Uh, the actual brightness itself is going to be pretty much the same. Uh, in practice, though, you will get a little bit better transmission out of this one, out of the laminated one, for the exact same reason that I just stated. There's just less for the light to bounce off of, therefore more of it is going to make it through to your eyeballs. Um, screen quality, I mean, it's looks like an OEM screen. Looks fine to me. Looks great. But, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. The case does fit pretty decently. Um, there's still a few screws I gotta actually install, but I mean, it seems fine. All my buttons and such still work just fine. I'm surprised this joystick works as well as it does, but I didn't have any problems with it. And just to make sure, is fine. I am going to reset the calibration just in case there's some weirdness going on since I did swap the sticks. And then let's check the other one. Same thing. Feels fine. Seems to be performing just fine. Even after a reset. So yeah, the only thing left now is I gotta figure out why my plus button's not working right. Um, but that's pretty much it. I think I'll tear it down off screen because quite frankly, I'm not gonna do it right now and I'm tired. Um, but yeah, I'm pleased with it. Oh, it's not fully seated, that's why it's not. Okay, there it goes. I didn't put the screw in this corner. So it's clicking out, but there's my SD slot. Does not fit nearly as well as OEM. Game card slot, same thing, but much better than the SD slot. These buttons are totally fine, but that's the exact same membrane, so not too surprised. Uh, all of the shoulder buttons and face buttons are fine, but again, same buttons, so not too big a deal. Touchscreen works, LCD works, lamination is fantastic, and I got it adhered just with some regular 3M 300 LSE. And that's all I got. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Huh? Huh? Huh?
Yeah, I know. But I don't care. I like it. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can see exactly where I left that screw out, though, so I gotta go fix that. And I gotta find the screw I dropped. But that's, that's all I've got. Looking pretty good. I think I've gotta move it over and up and maybe tilt it a little bit more. But it's also a sticker and I already stuck it down, so that might not happen. <laughs> but anyway, that's all I got, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, I, I'll throw a link to where I got this shell, if it even still exists. Like I said, I've had this shell a very long time. Uh, I'll throw a link to the laminated display assemblies, but I got them off Taobao, so it's going to be kind of difficult to get them if you don't, if you're not already familiar with that. Um, and I'm not going to walk walk you through it. There's uh, there are resources online if you want. Um, I recommend a screen protector too because this is still a plastic digitizer. And one downside to having it laminated is that because it's plastic, you notice very apparently all of the um, touches that you do because they show on the LCD now. There's no air gap for that. Uh, so this will be a little bit more delicate, but uh, those little gaskets that separate the digitizer from the LCD are really hard to get for the switch light. Uh, and so this negates the need for that at the very least. Eh. I don't know. I think that's all I've got though. Um, I'm going to actually use this thing, make sure that all of my repairs are sufficient, and who knows what I'll do with it from there, but I guess we'll find out. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching.